All right, so we have a new video today. We just released about the Insta360 drone. And I thought, let's look at what's going on. Uh, even though I do run 360rumors.com, I just gotta say, Insta360 never reached out to me about it. I think that it's because I don't do drones. And uh, my good friend and uh, Founder of 360 Rumors, uh, Mick actually was able to test this drone in China when he went to visit their offices or was in China at that point, like maybe early this year. So these drones that you're seeing on the screen right now are actually real and they've been all over Twitter or X. Um, lots and lots of rumors about it. And so I thought, let's talk about why would Insta360 actually have a drone? What makes what makes it a good idea? What does it make business sense? Is it really competitive? Can it really compete with DJI? Because there's not much specs to talk about, and so I don't want to really dwell on what the drone is, but more like why the drone. All right. So before that, let me just play. Uh, what Mick has to say and then we we take it from there. So uh, Mick's channel is 360 rumors with a V and so let's go And I can tell you that because I've actually flown it here are seven things I can tell you as a beta tester But first here's the trailer gravity. All right, so this is the trailer and to be very honest the trailers on the website it's on YouTube probably or Facebook somewhere. So I would just recommend you go and watch the trailer. You don't see anything other than a bunch of shots that may or may not be taken using the that drone, but it's just a sort of an inspirational trailer. It doesn't show anything about the um about the drone itself. So But every time we rise Paper planes to pioneers. Now before I do that, let me just go do this thing that I usually do, which is 1.5, so that it's a shorter video because nobody wants to listen to a 10 minute video. Here we go. We defy the weight of the world. Right. Higher. Uh, right. In China. The first, is it an Insta360 drone? No, it is not. When we see anti-gravity there, that's not the model name. That's the company that made it. So anti-gravity is a different company from Insta360. But anti-gravity and Insta360 are working very closely together. All right, so this is corporate speak speech for it is Insta360, but a subsidiary. And I think that it makes a lot of business sense to have these two separate subsidiaries because Insta360 sells consumer cameras that are used by everybody all around the world and they're probably one of the largest in the US. So to go and say this is another Insta360 drone puts them in this sort of legal murky water that all drone companies, especially DJI is in, uh, which makes it sort of difficult to operate. So I think it makes a lot of sense for them to separate these two entities, separate the branding, separate everything uh, for legal reasons and also maybe for some sort of branding perspective where you know Insta360 does not really sound great for a drone whereas anti-gravity sounds pretty dope I have to say that's a great name anti-gravity is a great name but you know it doesn't really roll off your tongue now you might have also heard that DJI is releasing their first 360 camera the Osmo 360 in, on July 31, just a few days from now. So it's really interesting to see a rivalry between DJI and Insta360. So one thing you might- Yeah, I agree with Mick over here. This is probably the most exciting time in the 360 camera industry in the last three or four years. I, I can't remember this kind of competition coming to the market because Insta360 really competed with Ricoh for a very short time. And then I think there was Candao for a very short time, but it just kind of blew everybody out of the water every year. I think from X3, X4, and X5, 
just completely obliterated the competition. And for a company like DJI, which is technologically better than Insta 360, some would some would say bigger brand, much larger company in terms of size and capitalization and just money it makes. Um, for them to come into the Insta360 atmosphere, which is always considered a smaller company, um, it's pretty interesting. And I think that it's possibly because Insta360 has started opening its wings, you know, like it's been doing action cams, it's been doing uh, the sort of, uh, I don't know what you call them, dollies. Um, so this has been pushing a lot of other kind of products. So DJ is like, okay, you know, let's just go do a camera, a 360 camera and like really suffocate their oxygen to grow. Because Insta360 as a camera company has started doing these other cameras like in the action space and the dollies and this and that. And the reason they can do that is because they have a lot of oxygen coming in from the 360 camera space. And for DJI, it feels like, hey, you know, we also compete now in the action camera space. Uh, and so why, and so now you're competing over there and then you have, because DJI's oxygen is really their drones and GoPro's oxygen was their action cameras. And so now they're competing on the action camera space. And so DJI was like, let's go competitive. Let's take away the oxygen space in the 360 camera market. And so they're releasing a 360 camera mark, 360 camera in like the next few days. And so I think Insta360 obviously knew about this because you know corporate espionage is a real thing. And so they have been working on a drone. Seems like for almost a year. Because uh, they already had released a drone or something like that a few like a last year or a year and a half back. So they've been working on this other drone that is gonna come but and it's named as a different brand and all of that stuff. So I think it'd be interesting to see the rivalry sort of take off though one would bet all their money on DJI because they have oxygen in a much larger market, which is drones. I think drones is probably hundred or two hundred times the market of three sixty cameras. And it might be very difficult for Insta360 to really like suffocate DJI in that space but it would be easier for DJI to suffocate Insta360 in the 360 camera space. So that's why it's interesting. You might be wondering is, does Insta360 have a chance? I mean, DJI is so big. In fact, if you look at the trailer ad, it alludes a little bit to this concept because it's talking about gravity as this unstoppable force, and yet we strive to defy it. And I think it's in a way a subtle allusion to DJI. Like everyone knows DJI as this like behemoth, this invincible juggernaut that no one can beat, at least with respect to drones. And yet there's this small company that dares to defy DJI. Oops, I mean gravity. Anyway, I think this rivalry between DJI and Insta360 can only be of benefit to consumers. And I'm looking forward to seeing what each of them can do. But let's talk. Yeah, and I think, you know, Mick makes a great point, which is like, you know, we have no, we are consumers, we want good cameras, we want good products at good prices. And every time there's competition, it pushes innovation, which is super important. I think that Insta360 was a bit uh, non-innovative in their last, in their last few launches, except for, uh, except for the replaceable camera lenses, which is pretty good. And I think now that DJI is in, I think they're just gonna push both of them to innovate. Even if it doesn't mean cheaper prices, at least they'll innovate and provide better cameras, better products for all of us. So I think it'll be, it's really good because it's, for the 360 market, I think it's really good. I don't know for the drone market because we don't know what the, what the Insta360 drone looks like. Will it release, when will it release, we really don't know that. How about the specs of this drone? I don't know all the specs, but I can tell you the weight is under 250 grams. So in many jurisdictions, you'll be able to use this drone without having to register it. Um, I can also tell you that the video resolution is 8K. Now when we hear 8K, the first question we wonder is, is this a 360 drone? So that's the next thing I want to uh, tell you about. Um, so we have the resolution, it's 8K. That, that by itself does not mean that it is a 360 drone. So this, for example, uh, is the Hover X1 Pro Max. I've, uh, I beta tested this uh, drone and it is 8K. 
So this is an example of a drone that's 8K, but it's not 360. So just the fact that this drone is 8K doesn't necessarily mean. All right, so Mick's saying a few cool things. One is the weight. I think that if it's under a certain amount of weight, it goes below the regulations, so you have no issues with it. I think that's right now. I feel if you look at the way the drone industry has been progressing, I think that this weight class will not really matter. And I think most drones will be under regulation. I'm pretty sure about this. And 8K, you know, at this point, because we have not seen the camera, I'm not going to really put too much emphasis on the 8K part. You know, because like people just say stuff, not make, but companies just say stuff. And you dig in and you find out it's not the way it is. So I would just hold my horses on the 8K part. It is 360. Having said that, when we look at the trailer very carefully, we see some shots that look like they're tiny planets or tiny planet transformations. And that would be possible only if this was a 360 drone. And then plus, we look at the anti-gravity logo. It looks like a tiny planet. So all signs point to this being a 360 drone. Now, you might be wondering what exactly is a 360 drone and who needs one? I actually have several 360 drones. I've been flying them for several years now. All right. I, in this case, I got to give shout out to Mick. Mick has a lot of drones. I have seen them. He has a lot of drones. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about. Drones and 360 drones and why they're important and how they do. And, you know, he, he got the whole analysis on it. And I think I agree with him. And I think me and Mick really agree on one core issue and one core point about 360 capture is that 360 capture is by definition better than just single POV. And whether that is in your camera or is it in your drone or is it in your gimbal, wherever it is, it is better because you can capture the whole thing, you can capture all perspectives and you can find the perspective that makes more sense for you. And I think uh, Mick is right about this, which is a 360 drone is definitely from just a overall value better. Now we don't know if this particular drone is gonna be 360, but Mick says it could be. 360 drones are kind of like normal drones, but they capture a fully spherical 360 view. Not only that, but in most uh, 360 drones, the body of the drone is within the blind spot of those two 360 lenses, so the body disappears from the shot. So yeah, we like to call our 360 cameras invisible flying cameras. Well, a 360 drone is more literally an invisible flying camera. Because they capture a fully spherical 360 view, you can uh, change the view to any direction that you want, or even yep. in multiple yep, this is exactly what I'm saying. Di directions simultaneously. OK, so that's cool, but how useful is this? I had an assignment once where I brought a, a regular FPV drone with a GoPro camera, and then I had a 360 drone with me at the same time. And I flew the same location first with the GoPro uh, and the FPV drone, and then I flew it again, this time with the 360 drone. And you can see this, how the shots are different. This is the normal, like just uh, FPV with naked GoPro. Oh, there we go. My bad, my bad. And this is the 360. I think I just let me go back a little bit. Oh, here we go. So here you can see how you can sort of navigate the view without having to fly the drone. You know, the drone is just kind of going in one nice momentum, one nice direction, sorry, not nice momentum, one nice direction. And then just because it's a 360 capture, you can sort of point your POV wherever you want to capture, which I think is far more beautiful than having to fly the drone to catch that POV.
think clearly the 360 drone makes a lot of sense. Now, whether or not this Insta360 is gonna be a 360 drone or not, I really don't know. So I'm just gonna move forward from here. All right, let's go. They chose the 360 drone. Next question, is this hard to fly? 360 FPV drones, like the one I used for that assignment and others that I, I've had before, they're very challenging to fly. I mean, FPV drones in general are already challenging. So it seems the way Mick is describing, it is a 360 drone. So even though he says it may not be, it seems like it is because he's explaining a lot about it. So I think it probably is. Challenging to fly because they're almost always manual. It's not stabilized by GPS, not usually. When you add 360 lenses, then you take the difficulty a step further because number one, usually they have a very poor power to weight ratio. It makes it harder to fly smoothly. And secondly, um, because they have lenses on both sides, if you crash, you're very likely to damage your lenses. I have, I've done that. In fact, I've actually lost a 360 drone over the Pacific Ocean, but we'll talk about that next time. Anyway, this anti-gravity drone is fortunately much easier to fly. Uh, it is, I would say, it is possible for a total beginner to fly it on their first day. What about the price? Okay, so he says it is a 360 drone. Confirmed. Seems like it, even though he was not very sure at the beginning. And apparently it's easier to fly. I don't know what that means, but we'll only have to wait for the drone to come out. Um, I don't know the exact price for this drone, uh, but the rumors I've heard about the price, um, if they're true, uh, it means that this drone is not cheap, but it is a good value. Like you get um, a lot of value for the price that you pay. All right, so when is it coming out? The anti-gravity drone will be announced in August. So that's when you're gonna see. All right, so I guess the bottom line is it's a 360 drone. We don't know the pricing. We don't know when it's gonna come. But I think it's interesting about why they're doing it. I think it makes sense to some extent for Insta360 because it's such a large market and they probably have the technology and the resources to do it. At least try it. But I believe that if they don't execute it really well the first time and the second time, like they'll probably get two shots at it. They, will, they would have spent a lot of money, time and energy and just gotten nowhere. And I think that that's the reason why they're taking so long to, because according to Mick, he saw it in February. So they're probably working on it since last year or before that. And they still haven't released it. And they are planning to release it at some point in the future. So we don't know. And it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense for them to launch something that is one step ahead than of DJI. Like I don't think they would get anywhere if they launch a drone that is similarly matched to G DJI because then they would have to spend all that energy to build something that is better than that and then by that time DJI has already gone two steps ahead. So it makes sense for them to somehow, I don't know how they're gonna do it, but predict what this next generation of drones are gonna be and launch something that is better than that. So that it takes at least one cycle of innovation for DJI to actually catch up with you and then you have some space to just say, hey, you know, we have something that's better. But all of this is fun for us as consumers and content creators about what's happening in this industry. We probably get better products that are more innovative. Um, yeah, that's all from me today, but it's, it's a really exciting time in the 360 world right now. All right, take care.